प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ओ माइडी our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhagatji, and all of you devotees. Jai Swami Narayan. For, for the past, I think, two months, we've been discussing about the life of Sadhguru Muktan Swami and his qualities and his character now from starting from this lecture we would like to move on to other various charitras so after reading and researching upon a charitra there is this one charitra of a divine Hari Bhagat named Gela Kodi that we want to learn about. Even just how we learned about Sadhguru Muktan Swami's life, Nan Santos, meaning 500 elite saints, prominent saints of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, just like how their life was divine. In exact similar fashion, Bhagwan Swami Narayan's devotees, male and female devotees, their life was also divine. From the simplest, you can say, quality, or from the most complex behavior, various devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan displayed all these kinds of ranges for us to pick from one, from Dada Kachar, you can pick out his faith. From Sura Kachar, you can pick out his friendship with Bhagwan. Different devotees possess different qualities. From Parvat Bhai, you can pick out his uh, ability to uh, attach one's vrutti on Bhagwan's form constantly. That kind of, you can say, lagani, that kind of passion. Such various qualities, complex or simple, we see. In this charitra, Gela Kori, we are going to see how his life was and what we can take from him and imply it into our life. <clears throat> Swami Narayan Hare, this charitra is called Gold and Dust Are Equal. Gela Kori of Limri village was a true devotee of Sriji Maharaj. Though he was born in a lower caste, he was noble and towering by character. In the time of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, I want to say a majority of 70% of his devotees were middle to low class devotees. Yes, Bhagwan did perform such miracles where he made kings into saints. We can see Brahmanand Swami, Ladudanji, who was a great exquisite poet who completely transformed his life into a, a noble saint. But more so, we see devotees who are of the lower caste or the middle caste. And Bhagwan Swami attracted these devotees and turned their life into a complete 360. How so? Well, Sagram Vagri. We can say he is the lowest of the lowest uh, caste uh, member you can even address yet 
he was a he was like a beggar you can say in that time he was considered the lowest of the low in bhagwan swami narayan he had the most um sagam vagri had one of the most worst habits uh he didn't have any manners any etiquette yet through bhagwan's charm he converted sagam sagram vagri into completely proper devotee that's bhagwan swami narayan's power we can say in a similar fashion gela kori he was a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan a true devotee yet he belonged to the lower caste yet his character was noble and towering moving on the severe famine of 1813 christ era had spread its tentacles of suffering and death on the land of kathiawar in the time of bhagwan swami narayan bhagwan was born in 1781 but reflecting upon this sentence there was a severe famine that occurred in the time of 1813 now this was such a devastating famine that there were so many charitras of bhagwan swami narayan in the, and his devotees that had uh, had to do with this famine meaning this famine affected bhagwan swami narayan swami narayan's devotees so much so that there was charitras made from this famine we can say now i just want to read after upon researching a little bit i've found i found the history of the famine and how it was how devastating it was and i wanted to just share this with all of you so you can even see that this was no regular famine or this was no ordinary uh, uh epidemic so the great famine of 1812 1813 in 1811 bhagwan swami narayan prophesied a great famine striking the land of the following year now we believe bhagwan swami narayan to be antaryami meaning he knows he is omnipresent he knows what is going to happen in the future he knows what's going on in the present time and he knows what will what, what what did happen in the past well before the famine occurred in 1812 and 1813 bhagwan himself in 1811 prophesied that a great famine will strike the following year meaning he warned everyone during 1811 and 1812 he traveled throughout kutch saurash and gujarat to alert the devotees he commanded that he commanded them to sell m- much of their property jewelry and cattle to buy and store grain now in that time whoever was a very firm and staunch follower of bhagwan swami narayan he had faith he had trust in the words of bhagwan and he could yes sell everything away and buy grains but a person who didn't have trust in bhagwan swami narayan who did not follow him they were completely devastated and struck by this famine now trust is something that's very very important a vital vital element in the spiritual you can say pathway how so well if we look towards in the world right now and this example has been shared with you many many times but going on an airplane you've never met the pilot before you don't know who he is you don't know his name he just introduces himself on a speaker phone uh in the airplane where everyone can listen you don't even know if he's talking or not and through that we say that he we say that he will take us from point a to point b without any kind of problems we believe we have trust in his words and we know that he will fly the plane without any kind of problems not only that but a doctor when we become sick we go and we meet the doctor and we tell him we have this problem and he diagnoses us and gives us a prescription for a certain medicine 
Now, you don't know the name of this medicine or you don't even, you've never even heard of it, yet you have faith in his words and you go to the local pharmacy and buy the medicine and take it instantly because you know that this doctor has diagnosed me completely right and he knows what's right for me. That's how much trust we have in a doctor. In that time, in that era of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, those saints and devotees had this kind of a trust. Just like how we have a trust in a pilot, or we have a trust in a doctor, or we have a trust in a taxi driver. Just like that. The devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and the saints of Bhagwan Swaminarayan had such kind of a trust in Bhagwan's words. So, he commanded them to sell much of their property dweller and cattle to buy and store grain. Because what happens in a famine is that everything gets wiped out. Meaning crops, nothing can be grown. And in that time, there was just crops to eat, right? Um, you can say vegetables, corn, wheat, millet, all these grains, that's what they consumed as a diet. But when it becomes, when the fam a famine occurs, it completely becomes wiped out. So but once it sell all your property, it's not important. You can get it back in the future. But get as much as grains as possible so you don't stay hungry. Those who obeyed escaped its hideous effect, meaning the famine's hideous effect. To many who starved, devotee and non-devotee alike, he personally delivered grain, grains. He traveled through distant villages and towns at nights on horseback for this purpose. Look at how kind Bhagwan is, warning everyone because he knew. So what's the best thing to do is to help and warn. And this shows that Bhagwan Swaminarayan came on this earth to take care of devotees and non-devotees. This shows that this is a very, very primary characteristic of God where He is well-doer and benefiting for everyone. This shows that Bhagwan Swaminarayan cared for devotees and non-devotees. Now, Nishkoran Swami says, Jijaya samani vata charajkari che te dithi me sakshat acharajkari che Aj suthi pan amari jivan janu chu Aj suthi pan amari jivan janu chu Rakho cho khabar sari jivan janu chu Bhagwan is taking care of us each and every moment and it's seen here in the famine where he completely uh, just like a newspaper would spread he spread the news that a famine is occurring a famine is occurring sell everything and be saved he sent the majority of his paramansos meaning his saints to surat in south gujarat where the effect was less severe and the devotees he, he even sent with them for that time so they would also be saved so back to our story now you know how devastating that famine was. We can understand how Gela Kori was inside that situation, inside that time, and how and what he did. And, and it's very important because in such kind of a situation, what to do and what not to do, it can't be deciphered. You can't tell. In such kind of a life and death situation, to remember Bhagwan and to remember his agna and his commands and to completely forget about Bhagwan and break his commands, there's a very, very thin line, a thin wall. Yet, Gela Kori reacted in a different manner. We want to take a look. Many migrated to the South Gujarat to, to survive uh, and properly uh, live out their life. Gela Kori and his wife, too, were heading optimistically towards the town of Surat. On the way, Gela, Gela Bhagat's eyes fell upon a shiny ornament. It was an expensive anklet that someone had lost, meaning as they were walking, 
Now he was walking and uh, he must have seen something shiny on the path. So it was an anklet um, and it was made out of gold. It was just shining there on the ground, the footpath. And he saw this. Despite his poverty, Gelabhakta had no desire to take it. Now this is a characteristic of Bhagwan, of Bhagwan Swami Narayan's devotees. In such kind of a situation, a famine, where you're bound to sell everything, you're bound to go to another city, migrate to another city. Why? Because everything else around you is dying. Yet not to take something that's made out of gold, you can sell it for something, you can keep it, you can do so many things with it and just leave it. That's a characteristic of, of a devotee of God. But he thought of his wife, who was a few furlongs behind him. Being a woman, she would be enticed to take it and it would, and it would amount to a trans, transgression of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's words, meaning what he thought was that, okay, I'm definitely a solid devotee of Bhagavan Swaminayan, but my wife, who is just behind me, maybe 200 feet away, 300 feet away, she might see this and she might be enticed to take it. And this would break Bhagavan Swaminayan's commands. Now, the main point coming here in this story is the commands of Bhagavan Swaminayan. Out of the five you can say rules, bunch of Ratman, of a satsangi, namely, not to consume alcohol, not to consume meat, not to steal, uh, not to perform adultery, and not to eat anything outside or from a lower uh, person's hands. These are the five rules of a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminare. Seeing this, this would transgress, I mean, this would break the rule of not to steal. And Gela Bhakta was very aware that Bhagwan Swaminarayan would not even like this. So he thought that, okay, I'm okay, but my wife might break Bhagwan's rules. And this would be uh, devastating because I want to please Bhagwan. His goal was that. So let's see what happens. So th thinking that, Gela Bhakta covered the anklet with dirt, meaning he saw it. So what he did was he kind of put dirt um, around it so it couldn't be seen. And he started to walk again on his path. In Akshana Vasiva, there is a, a, a line, Pari Vastu Koine Hathe Naujale Raj, meaning uh, there, Premanand Swami says that this exact, uh, you can say, prasang can reflect off of uh, what Swami says. That body was too coine, how to know, you, you can't, uh, something that's on the ground, uh, you shouldn't take, you should not, uh, it, because it's not yours. Preman Swami said this, and we can see in uh, Gila Bhakta's story that he also performed the same uh, ritual and he followed the same principle. After a while, when his wife caught up with him, she asked, what were you doing sitting down a little while back? Meaning, she was only 200 um, feet back. So she saw Gela Bhakta sitting there, and she didn't see him covering the anklet with dirt, but she saw that something was different, something was odd. So she kind of interviewed and inquired um, to Gela Bhakta that, what were you doing? Why were you sitting there back there? Gela Bhakta revealed to her his thoughts about the anklet and added, to, be, to prevent you from seeing it, I covered it with dirt, meaning the anklet, the golden anklet. Why did you cover, why did you cover dirt upon dirt? That's what she asked. Why did you cover dirt upon dirt? I see others' possession, same as dirt. Gila Bhakta's wife nobly responded. Gila Bhakta was surprised and fascinated by his wife's resolve. Meaning, Bhagwan Swaminarayan, devotees, also possessed such kind of understanding, samjan, that Bhagwan Swaminarayan talks about in the Vachnamrudgarda middle chapter 13, that Bhagwan has such kind of a, a level, a spiritual level, a stiti, that he sees 
everything the same. In that similar fashion, upon this devotee's, you can say, statement that this is dirt and this is dirt, we can say and assume that this devotee was also at a spiritually elevated state and saw gold and dirt to be the same. Now, in the end, before we leave this body, our goal is to become ekantik bhaktos. And to do so, this is one of the, you can say, um, one of the things we must possess, one of the eligibilities we must need uh, to kind of uh, progress to become ekantik, which is to see everything to be the same. Meaning, something that's salty and something that is very sweet or not salt. Everything should be the same. Everything, meaning everything regarding the five uh, punch viches uh, should become the same. That's how when we become like that, then it should be known and when we possess the Dharma Bhakti Gnana Vairagya to the utmost, it should be known that we are Egantik Bhaktos. So if you ever want to test how high of a level of bhakta you are, then you just have to measure if you see everything to be equal, meaning insults and also praise. If you think both, if you understand both of these to be the same, meaning, if I can give you an example, if someone insults you very, very badly, you have no, it has no effect on you, your mind. It's stable. And if someone brings you on a stage, praises you, talks about many, many of your qualities, uh, gives you a flower garland, so on and so forth, yet you're not affected and you have no thoughts afterwards regarding any of this praise that I am something like this, then it should be known that both have become equal. But if our mind becomes unstable in any of these situations, we have still not become, uh, you can say, ekantik. That's a way to test ourselves. Saying this, this devotee also possessed something similar, a similar kind of state. Despite having hard times, Gela Bhakta remained steadfast to Bhagwan Swaminarayan's instruction of not taking a thing lying on the wayside. Now, Bhagwan Swaminarayan's instructions, that's what I want to talk about. Instructions meaning dharma. Dharma meaning uh, what to do and what not to do. The code of conducts. As we know, each and every religion, may it be Buddhism or Hinduism or Judaism or Christianity, has its own rules. I mean, even if we go outside in a business or if we go to um, a, a big corporation or if we go to you know outside and we're driving on the street there's rules a stop sign is a, a form of a rule uh, a speed limit is a form of a rule uh, in, a, in a corporation uh, this is what you should do this is what you shouldn't do you should wear this on this day you cannot do these kinds of transactions so on and so forth those are rules in a business there is many many rules that if you have a franchise motel you can only use franchise uh, bed sheets and franchise pamphlets and so on and so forth things that have the logo of the franchise on it right Everywhere we see, we live in a world full of rules, especially the United States. In our sect, in our religion, rules is also very, very important and implied and followed and very, very uh, to the strictest, you can say. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan was practical. He knew that if I made it too hard, for the age of these people in the age of Kali Yuga, it would be very difficult. If I made it too easy, then no one would care and no one would follow. So he was completely very, very, he, he was an intermediate Bhagwan when he established his rules. He knew that if I did this, this would happen. If I did this, this would happen. So Bhagwan Swaminarayan's 
simple rule of not to steal. That was very, very intermediate, mediocre. It wasn't too hard to do. It wasn't too easy. It was in the middle. Dharma is, as I said, was instructions. The ethical code, meaning sadachar, prescribed by the scriptures. What to do and what not to do. In Haricharitra Amrut Sagar, Pur 22, Tarang 87, Bhagwan states, Seeking refuge of God without observing Niyam Dharma is like a leaking boat. It would sink surely. Nothing will reap benefit without following the Niyam Dharma. Meaning if you had a boat but if it had a big, big hole or even a small leak, a small crack, we can see that um, if we remember in, in history, we go back in time in 1911, a, a ship by the name of the Titanic, um, it was coming from England, or it was coming from England and going to New York. And while it's on its way, uh, during the evening time, icebergs, uh, there are very, very massive icebergs in the Atlantic. And uh, maybe uh, the, the captain did not see the iceberg. And then it did see it. The captain did see the iceberg, but it was a little too late. And as the ship was turning, it scraped its side against the, the iceberg, making a very, very big scratch um, in the ship. And it, it was known that this ship would never sink. That's what, that's what kind of a statement was made behind it. Yet, um, unfortunately, uh, the, sink, the, the ship filled with water and it sunk. And uh, there was survivors, and many did survive, but many also died. But the main point is that a, a big hole or a small hole or a small scratch or a big scratch, yet it did sink. In the same way, if we do not follow or niyam dharma, then we cannot even float in the ocean of satsang and get to Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So, Despite having hard times, Gela Bhakti remained steadfast in Bhagwan Swamiran's instruction of not taking a thing or lying on the wayside. His wife was his wife even perceived other valuable possessions as dirt. Seeing this, this ends our charitra of Gela Bhakti and how he possessed um, such kind of a dharma. But I'm also reminded of our Puja Guruji and how he follows the, the vow of Nirlobi. Nirlobi Vratman, meaning um, not to take anything from anyone. He follows all Vratmans of a sadhu, meaning just like how there is five Vratmans of a Hari Bhakto, there's five Vratmans for a sadhu. Uh, number one is uh, not to have any worldly desires, not to keep money, meaning Nirlobi, uh, not having any inclination for any tasteful items, uh, not possessing ego, and finally, not having any attraction or attachments to relatives or anything. These are the five rules uh, of a uh, sadhu. Puja Guruji possessed, possesses and follows these rules to the utmost, we can say. And in his life we see, there was a small incident that happened in 1993 where Puja Guruji arrived in the United States for the very first time. And uh, he was... Um, in a city where there was a seven-day parayin that was held in a temple. And there, uh, Puja Guruji, before the parayin, he was, or during it, he was doing um, padramis at many, many uh, devotees' homes. And there must have been a, a big of a, a, a little bit of a, like a fuss where um, the committee members uh, said that all the donations that, you know, uh, Puja Guruji uh, receives on the Padramni, it should be donated to the temple, which was not proper, or which was not anything part of the rules. It was just kind of uh, instigated on, on Guruji, it was pressured. So that's the only way you can do and perform the seven day para, and that's what they stated. So devotee uh, was also with Puja Guruji, and he was notified and told about this, but uh, this devotee, he, he did not say anything to Guruji at that time. While he was driving the car, he was moodless. Uh, he, he didn't feel um, that this was going good. So Guruji saw this and he said, Bhagat, what's wrong? 
Could you please tell me? Share with me what's on your mind. Bujuguru, um, the Bhagat explained to Buja Guruji, saying that this is a situation uh, and we have to you know, give all the donations away or else we can't do the Parayan. Guruji said, no problem. We're not here for any kind of donations. We're here to please Bhagwan and to perform the Kalyan of as many devotees as we can. Go ahead and give everything to them. And we don't, I don't have any kind of problems. Now, such kind of a saint who has come on this earth to perform the Kalyan of numerous, numerous souls, to perform the Kalyan of even those who are non-devotees, he has this kind of a virtue that proves that he is sent here from Akshardham. Not only that, but such kind of Ratman cannot be followed if one does not have God in its center life. Puja Guruji lives in such a life or lives a life where Bhagwan is his center, his motive, and he wants to follow each and every Agna of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and please him. Due to this, we see in Puja Guruji's life as well that he also follows such kind of rules and that's why he is who he is right now. Seeing this, the instructions of Bhagwan Swaminarayan are very important, just like how we have rules in our school um, and outside life. In the same way, uh, through Gela Kodi's, uh, you can say, Charitra, Divine Incident, and through Puja Guruji's Charitra, we can uh, experience that and we can uh, also uh, kind of uh, develop an inclination and we can also be inspired to follow the rules of Bhagwan Swaminarayan to please him. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan. Varnive Sharamani Adarsanam Mandaha Saruchirananam Bujam Pujitam Suranaro Tamir Muda Dharmananda Maham Vichintai Dharmananda Maham Vichintai Srigan Shyam Maharaj and Ejai Supreme Almighty, our beloved Kansya Maharaj, Path Maker to our liberation, Pujapat Guruji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Sriji Maharaj was sitting on a large decorated court in Sudhakajar's Darbar in Loya in the year of 1820, and in front of him, there were many devotees and many santos who were seated in an assembly. And Bhagavadanan Swami and Sivanan Swami both asked Maharaj a question that what are the characteristics of a person who has faith in the form of Bhagwan and his sons coupled with their glories? And in reply, Maharaj himself narrated the uh, brief explanation regarding the faith in the form of Bhagwan as well as his sons. And after that, Bhagwan Swami himself narrated the stories of different devotees' lives to explain the definition of the faith 
in the form of Bhagwan and his son to the Sabha. And after narrating many, many devotees' life incidents, including many female devotees, as well as Muktanand Swami's life story and many other devotees' story. After that, he himself narrated his own stories because we know many times, in just as in today's situation, when we are listening Katha from Puja Guruji or any other Santo, at that time, during the Sabha or during Katha, Puja Guruji or Santo may describe some qualities, some saintliness or some virtues of the devotees and in the Sabha, there were many, many devotees. Maybe some non-devotees also came to listen. And that is why someone may have doubt in his mind that this sadhu is speaking regarding these virtues, but it, it is really that, that virtue may in his life or not. Then, as we know, Puja Guruji and the great Santo, they are like, Bhagwan, uh, they possess a power like that of Bhagwan, like they knew everything about our mind, about our thought, even about our dream, and that is why he immediately gave reply in his discourses. Like I have also, they, they, they never say direct that I have that virtues in my life, but indirectly they narrated their own incident so that the other devotees as well as the one who has a doubt in Puja Guruji or Santo's speech, he also can be understood that this is not only a, uh, this is not only the narrating uh, the kathas, but this is a real. Uh, he has also the virtues, and in the same way, here Bhagwan Swaminar himself also narrated his own inclination, his own story. And in the Vachnavrata it is written by Santo that then Bhagavan Swaminan himself added, one who has faith in God coupled with the knowledge of his glory never disobey the word of God. He does as God says. Having said this, he revealed what what was my nature like. Well, I was such a renunciant that I could stay in one place only as long as the time interval between the morning and evening milking of cows not any longer. So while during the traveling in the jungles, meaning at the time of uh, one which run, as Bhagavan Swaminarayan behaved as a Nilkantwarni after renouncing his home and family in very early age, uh, as he was traveling one place to another in the jungle in the Himalayas, at that time he did not stay in any particular place for a long period of time. Because whenever he stay, uh, uh, because of his divine power, his divine persona, many attracted towards him. And that is why they all gave some food, some fruits, or maybe some, they offer their, if they, are, they were the king, they offer their palaces, their properties, their wealth. But Bhagwan did not like these things, and that is why Bhagwan immediately left the place and immediately proceeded towards another location. So this is what Bhagwan's inclination, his own choice, his own desire to stay and not to stay in one place for more time. But the main important point is that even though Bhagwan has this this inclination not to stay more time for one place. Still, Bhagwan said, I had intense vairagya, more uh, intense vairagya. Moreover, I had deep affection for Raman and Swami. Thus, when Swami sent a message from the city of Bhuj, Paya Mayaram Bhatt, saying, If you desire to stay in the Satsang Fellowship, you will have to stay by embracing its pillar. Then I literally embraced a pillar, seeing, uh, seeing, seeing this, Mayaram Bhatt said, you should live according to Muktanand Swami's commands. Thus, before I had the darshan of Ramanand Swami, I stayed under Muktanand Swami for nine months. So, one who has the previously mentioned faith in God and his son can also be known by this characteristic. This is a very famous incident in our Sampradaya. 
even written in many many scriptures because this is a part of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's life and the period he entered in our satsang fellowship. After renouncing his home, Bhagwan Swaminarayan as a Nilkantwarni, even the people of the different locations during his vicharan in the Himalayas as well as in the very deep forests, in jungles, in many remote places, many places of pilgrimages. There people knew him as a Nilkant Varni. And even while traveling those places, Bhagwan accepted a life of renunciation. And that is why he did not uh, desire or he did not have any kind of like totally dislike for all other objects other than the Bhagwan. And that is why he remain remain aloof from all the other worldly objects and still as he was walking he has only one mission in his mind to search a perfect master a search a perfect son and after one place by one he traveling throughout the most of the, all of the states of india and finally he reached in gujarat and when he came to a very remote and very little town of Lodge. There he sat in the morning on the step well. And in the morning time, when there was some santos, there, there was an ashram of Raman and Swami in the same village. And that is why some santo came there for taking a shower in a step well. So there Sukhan and Swami was there. And as Sukhan and Swami saw this Nilkanvarni, a very luminous face, and he understood this is a divine person. So this is not an ordinary person. So he requested Nilkanvarni, please come to our ashram. We are disciples of Ramanand Swami, and Ramanand Swami was not present at the time in our ashram, but we are staying here under Muktanand Swami's commands. Muktanand Swami was our senior and he was the main son of Raman and Swami. So we are remaining, uh, we are staying here under his command. And uh, Muktanand Swami was such a son that if we inform him about your, about you, and then he definitely will come here to have your darshan. Otherwise, you have a chance to come with us in our ashram. First Maharaj declined. Maharaj said, I did not stay in, a, in any of village. I only stay outside of the village. I do not want to come in a public area. Then as Sukhanan Swami said, if you, do, you will not come with us to our ashram, then Muktanan Swami, he definitely will come here to have your darshan. Then uh, Nilkantwani, he decided, okay, let's go there. Then, Maharaj came in Lodge, uh, Ramanan Swami's ashram. There, Muktanan Swami met him, and as he revealed his only uh, desire to meet Ramanan Swami, first Muktanan Swami narrated the glories of Ramanan Swami. And after that, Maharaj decided to meet Ramanan Swami. And as at that time, Ramanan Swami was in a town in the city of Bhuj. So Raman, uh, Muktanan Swami wrote a letter to Raman and Swami describing the glories, describing the virtues of Nilkanthwarni. And Nilkanthwarni also read down himself for Raman and Swami that I really des uh, desire to have your darshan. So please grace me with your darshan. Nilkanthwarni himself was Bhagwan, still he behave in such a way so that we today we have a perfect guide or we can say we have a perfect idea in our mind so that we can also work on the same path of liberation. So for making a new path, Bhagwan himself behave as a disciple, as a spiritual seeker, spiritual aspirant. And that is why he wrote a letter to Raman and Swami Des uh, explaining his desire to have his darshan. Then, in reply, 
Ramanand Swami himself wrote a letter, and in that letter, Ramanand Swami gave his words that if you really want to stay in our satsang fellowship, then you have to embrace the pillar of our satsang. Then, uh, as Mayarambhat came with the letter, and he gave that letter to Muktanand Swami, Muktanand Swami uh, read that letter, and he also gave the letter to Nilkantwarni, and Maharaj in the form of Nilkantwarni, he read the letter, and he immediately embraced the pillar, one of the pillars that situated in the ashram. Then Mayarambhat explained not to embrace this pillar. This is merely a wooden pillar, nothing else. But Ramanand Swami wanted to say by this embracing the pillar, Ramanand Swami indicating the pillar of satsang, and that is Muktanand Swami. Muktanand Swami is the one of the pillar of our satsang. So please stay under his command if you really want to desire to have a darshan of Ramanand Swami. This is what Ramanand Swami's desire. And in this way, this is Maharaj knew everything, but he behaved in such a way that he was he he did not know anything. Why? Because he wanted to reveal the new path to liberation, the easiest path to attain Bhagwan's realization. And that is why Maharaj stayed there for nine months under Muktanand Swami's command. And Muktanand Swami ordered him go out, uh, go outside the village and collected the cow dung. Maharaj immediately, without asking any question, he immediately went out of the village and he collected all the cow dungs and came back to ashram. When Muktanand Swami ordered him, please go there and at step well and fetch some water for Santo's cooking and other needs. Then Maharaj himself do that seva. So in this way, Bhagwan himself remain under the commands of Sant, Muktan and Swami. So in this way, Maharaj himself said, even my inclination is totally different. That did not stay at one place for a long time. Still, I changed my inclination. Why? Because I have a desire to have darshan of Raman and Swami. And for the for the darshan of Raman and Swami, even I not only stay in lodge, but even I remain under the commands of Muktan and Swami. So this is what the character and this is what the characteristic of a person who has faith in the form of God and His Son. Bhagwan did not uh, Bhagwan does not ha uh, does not have need to keep such kind of inclination or such kind of. Uh, virtues or such kind of faith in his own form or the form of God or we can say form of Sant. But he wants to show us if I kept such kind of faith in the words of Raman and Swami, meaning my Guru, then you have also to cultivate such a faith in the form of your Guru or in the words of your Guru. So that by following that words, following by uh, following the commands of uh, your guru, you can also attain God realization. Then Maharaj himself narrated the stories of Sundarji Sutar and Dosavanya. Sundarji Sutar, he was a devotee of uh, devotee of Raman and Swami in the beginning, and he was also the one of the administrator in Bhuj. At that time, there was a uh, king in the Bhuj, and uh, this Sundarji Sutar, he was one of his ministers. And that uh, also, when Ramanand Swami used to go there in the Bhuj, he every time himself remained present in the Sabha, in the assembly of Ramanand Swami. And by understanding the discourses, By understanding the discourses uh, dis described by Raman and Swami, he understood the glory of Bhagwan, and after that, he became a devotee dis or disciple of Raman and Swami. And after Raman and Swami, Raman and Swami, Raman and Swami's disappearing from this earth, he 
became a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and he has too much faith in words of Ramanand Swami as well as in the words of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So once, as he was an administrator head, or we can say a minister in the king, in the kingdom of Bhuj, so once the king of Bhuj he had a prince and. The king decided to uh, the king arrange marriage of the prince with a princess of another city that was near in Sorat, uh, and as there at that time there was no any particular transportation facilities, so uh, the king he decided to send Sundarji Sutar instead of himself or the prince giving him a sword in the, uh, indicating the presence of the prince and sent uh, Sundarji Sutar with the large party of the many soldiers, many cartmans and many other peoples to, ma uh, to uh, uh, perform the marriage ceremony of his prince in different state. So Sundarji Sutar for this occasion, he was the head of this project and he had to come to the sword. So there he asked someone that is there a Maharaj here in nearest any town? Then when he came near to one of the village, he asked some of the other people, local people, then the some of local people they said, Yes, Maharaj stay here in uh, Bandia. So Sundarji, Sundarji Sutar, he decided to meet Bhagwan to have a darshan of Maharaj, but he was on the occasion of, uh, of performing the marriage ceremony of the prince of the Bhuj. So now what to do? Then he make an idea. He explained to the other, his marriage parties, the people, the other people and other cartmans that I have a vow, I have a religious vow to have a darshan of, uh, there was one of the old temple here of Sivji and I have took a vow when I uh, become a head of this party, this marriage party, then I took a vow if this uh, whole marriage and all the other things is will be done without any problems or without any difficulties, then I will do darshan of this uh, Sankar Bhagwan in the nearest temple. So now I have to go there for a darshan of Sivji. So b by saying this to others, Sundarji Sutar himself went to Bandia for a darshan of Maharaj. There was no any Mahadev there, no other mandir, but he desired, desired to have a darshan of Maharaj. And as he went there to Bandia, Maharaj was staying in Murubai's home and Sundarji uh, Sutar, he did darshan of Maharaj. Then Maharaj asked him, who are you? As Sundarji Sutar was performing Dhanvat to Maharaj, and Maharaj asked him, who are you? Then Sundarji Sutar said, Maharaj, I am your Das. Then Maharaj asked him again, who are you? Then Sundarji Sutar, while performing Dhanvat to Maharaj, he said, Maharaj, I am your Das. Then Maharaj asked him, what is the characteristic of Das, you know? Then Sundarji Sutar said, Yes, Maharaj. The first duty of Das is to do without asking anything to his master. What the master says, the Das has to do. That, that is the first quality of Das. Then Maharaj said, Okay, then if you are Das, then right now become a son. Save your head and become a son. Then immediately he went into the village. He made a barber. He saved his head and only remain, uh, only keep uh, sikha and no any other hair on his head. And he came back. And after wearing a uh, saffron clothes like a sant, and he became a sant. Then. 
as he again came to maharaj and uh, did darshan of maharaj and maharaj said yes maharaj said this is good then maharaj say please go there to have darshan of muktanand swami then sundar ji suta he went there to have darshan of muktanand swami then muktanand swami first did not understand who is this new paramhans then after watching and deeply then muktanand swami said understood oh this is sundar ji sutar from bhuj then muktanand swami asked him how is this happen then sundar ji sutar in the form of sun he said this is what happened i was doing ganwat to maharaj and maharaj asked me who are you then i said i am your das and maharaj say what is the characteristic of das and what happened that i uh, i said what you say i have to do that that is the characteristic of das and maharaj give me command to become a sant so immediately i shave my hairs and i become a sant then uh, muktan singh asked him why are you coming here from bhuj only for a darshan of maharaj or for other work then sundar ji sutar said swami i have to come here for some state work like as i am minister of the state so the king sent me with the with this sword in the in the form of the presence of the prince for his marriage ceremony then muktan swami said now what uh, what will happen if you were not there in the marriage party then sundar ji sutar in the form of sant he said i don't know i don't care about anything as maharaj told me to become a sant i become a sant nothing else i do not know anything what will happen then muktanand swami said this is not good let's go to maharaj then muktanand swami and sundar ji sutar in the form of a new sant they both came to maharaj and muktanand swami requested maharaj maharaj whenever we have a problem here in surat and gujarat then meaning whenever we are troubled with the other khaki bawas or vairagis then at the time we have a good place in the buj because sundar ji sutar he was your devotees and that is why we are safe there in buj now sundar ji sutar become a sadhu he become a sant so we do not have any chance to have a safe place and as this become a sant so it is very tough to even spread satsang in bhuj then maharaj asked him swami what do you want to do please say i want to do that then muktanand swami said maharaj please command sundar ji sutar to become a household devotees and renounce these saffron clothes then maharaj asked him sundar ji sutar who are you then again swami said i am your das maharaj then what is the characteristic of das then again that new paramans he said maharaj what what you say that i have to do that is my duty then say okay then uh give up this saffron clothes and become uh, and accept your old clothes and become a household devotee as before then without any question or without hesitation he again change his clothes and become a household devotee sundar ji sutar then uh maharaj become extremely pleased upon him why because he was he was on the route of performing a prince marriage ceremony if he performed this kind of act then the king he would become extremely displeased upon sundar ji sutar and even as he was the king so he may give him a huge penalty still he didn't care for anything and he immediately obey maharaj's command so this is what even in the vachanamrit bhagwan swami and himself says that when a son said you become a son then immediately he give up everything all the relation his authority everything behind and he become a son so this is what the characteristic of a person who has faith in the form of 
Bhagwan and his sant. So Sundarji Sutar, he become a sant without thinking what will happen, nothing, and just become a sant as Maharaj gave him command. And again, as he has faith in the words of Maharaj, so he again become a household duty, renouncing the sadhu life. So this is what he, by performing this act, he earned immense rajipo, or we can say pleasure of Maharaj. And by that, even today, by reading this Vachanamrut, the words of Bhagwan, we even remember the devotee. So many of the devotees incident also Maharaj narrated in the same Vachanamrut, we will continue it later. Sri Ganshyam Maharaj Nijay Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvade Vishwaram Bhakti Dharmat Majam Vasudevam Hari Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swamina Rayanam Nilakantham Bhaje Sri Ganshyam Mahara.